Michigan head football coach Jim Harbaugh will be on the sidelines for the Wolverines' first three games of the 2023 season. According to The Athletic, CBS Sports, and ESPN's Adam Rittenberg, Michigan has decided to self-impose a three-game suspension for football coach Jim Harbaugh to begin the 2023 season, stemming from alleged violations committed during the COVID-19 dead period, the university announced just a few hours ago on today's wonderful Monday. Ultimately, I think the rationale behind this decision was to soften the blow from further NCAA punishments in a weird way that I just put it. But I think that's the rationale behind this whole move. I think that Ward Manuel in Michigan are thinking that if Jim Harbaugh is suspended for the first three games of the season, that either future penalties will be minimal or non-existent. I'm going to link articles from ESPN, The Athletic, and CBS Sports down below. I encourage you to check them out and read them as obviously these wonderful people are the insiders. I'm just someone who's talking to you through a microphone and a screen. But I can deliver some of my thoughts, and I think that, look, I don't know if this is the best move, but I can tell you for a fact that I don't think it will matter much in the long term. It's breaking news, that's for sure, and Harbaugh's pending suspension has been something of conversation for about, I'd say, the past month, potentially longer. However, whether it was three games or four games, it was re never really going to matter from a football product standpoint, unless maybe you extended his suspension to five or six games. Because Michigan's first three games of the regular season, and just hold your breath, because we're talking about some well-respected, powerhouse programs that Nick Saban will go to when he inevitably leaves Alabama. East Carolina, UNLV, Bowling Green. Those are the first three games of Michigan's season. Rutgers at home in the fourth game. Rutgers is going to prevent much more of a challenge than East Carolina, UNLV, and Bowling Green. I do not advise overlooking any of those teams because it is a cardinal sin in my mind to overlook any team any team whatsoever when you're playing them on the field. However, I can say from an objective point of view that Michigan, I'm 99.9% .9 sure, will be far superior to East Carolina, UNLV, Bowling Green, and even Rutgers. Though Rutgers will, again, as they're a Big Ten team, they have a better coaching staff and more talent, and they're a Power 5 program, they will prevent more of a challenge to Michigan. And in the past, whether it was 2021 where Rutgers nearly came back and tied the game, or in 2022 when Rutgers led Michigan at halftime, Greg Schiano has played Jim Harbaugh competitively and almost beat him in 2020, which, if Rutgers did win that game, I don't know if Jim Harbaugh would be Michigan's head coach in the present if Michigan and Cade McNamara didn't beat Rutgers on the road in 2020. Those are the first four games. Not very impactful. I expect Sharon Moore to be the interim head coach. No interim head coach has been announced yet. It will likely be announced whoever will be the interim in the following week or two. But I expect Sharon Moore to be announced as the interim head coach for reasons that we'll talk about in a few minutes. Once you get past four games, Nebraska on the road, Minnesota on the road, this is where a suspension would really start to become problematic. Nebraska's environment is very intimidating, and they have more talent than any of the first four teams that Michigan will be facing at home. Plus, an away game makes that spot a prime position for an interim head coach to just lose his mind in that environment. And then on the road at Minnesota... Minnesota doesn't have the same environment, but their stadium can be loud, and in my opinion, they're a better football team than Nebraska is, and it's a back-to-back -back road stretch. So I'm personally glad, as a Michigan fan, that Harbaugh will be able to coach one game at home and get his team and get himself as a head coach warmed up before taking the road against Nebraska and against Minnesota. From an objective point of view, I don't exactly know about the NCAA 
investigation or the alleged crimes, I hear people say that, oh, it was just a cheeseburger, or, well, he did lie, so he deserves to be suspended. And my interpretation of a lot of what I would say is just crowd noise is that he shouldn't have lied to the NCAA if he did, and it looks likely that at least he omitted some key details. However, the NCAA also has a lot of hypocrisy in paying more attention to a minor recruiting infraction by Jim Harbaugh and potentially trying to levy more penalties against him than Tennessee under Jeremy Pruitt or LSU or many other known examples. But the NCAA doesn't have much power, they're known to be inconsistent, and Michigan should just deal with what comes their way, not complain. And I think that's what they did by suspending Jim Harbaugh for three games as they're preparing. And this way, future penalties will likely decrease as opposed to if the suspension never occurred, or they might be non-existent. The NCAA might say, hey, Michigan took some kind of action, and as a result, we're not going to go through this trouble anymore. But Michigan, I expect to start out 3-0. and East Carolina, UNLV, Bowling Green will be the teams that Jim Harbaugh will not coach against as a head coach. Again, I expect Sharon Moore to be named the interim head coach. And it, we will have a great opportunity in my mind to see Sharon Moore as a head coach and as someone who I think is very much qualified to lead a group of young men to be successful and to win football games. I think Sharon Moore is one of the best assistant coaches in the country. As a coordinator and as a play caller, he's pretty green, so he's learning. There were growing pains on the offense last year, and I'm sure he would tell you that. As an offensive line coach, I personally think he is one of the best, if not the best in the nation as an offensive line coach. He has energy, he has toughness, he has smarts. He's going to be a great head coach. And I would personally, along with many other names, of course, whether it's Ohio State's Jim Knowles or Georgia's Glenn Schumann, Ohio State's Brian Hartline, Penn State's Mike Yersich or Manny Diaz, Iowa's Phil Parker, obviously, I would say for Oregon's offensive coordinator Will Stein, and those are just a variety of names. You could put a variety and a plethora of Power 5 coordinators on the Broyles Award watch list, just from how many teams have a high ceiling based on the preseason. But I think Sharon Moore especially will be a coordinator and an assistant that should be up for a Broyles Award nomination by the end of the regular season. I expect Michigan, even with this suspension, to still go 15-0 and Sharon Moore is going to be a huge part of this as the offense will take a massive step forward this year. If anyone else is named the interim head coach other than Sharon Moore, it would be a genuine surprise to me. And he'll serve against, again, East Carolina, UNLV, Bowling Green, and Michigan should dominate all those games and win easily probably by six or seven touchdowns or more or around that even with an interim head coach. Sharon Moore has been with the program for years. He's continually been promoted throughout Jim Harbaugh's staff, and he's trustworthy. So I think Michigan will be just fine. The first three games are cupcakes. I'm not going to lie. When people say Michigan's cupcake schedule, they're not exactly wrong for this season. When 2024 rolls around, if Michigan still has Texas on their schedule, along with USC... Ohio State, and Michigan State. I think they even have you know, Wisconsin and other programs. That won't exactly be a right thing to say, but for this season, Michigan's schedule, especially in the non-conference, is by far um, the antithesis of the hardest schedule in the country. I think their conference schedule is overrated, as I have Minnesota, Michigan State, Penn State, and Ohio State as top 25 teams. Michigan State and Minnesota, I expect to be much better than the national average expects them to be, and I think for good reason, and I think Ohio State is the second best team in the country. But the non-conference schedule, East Carolina, UNLV, and Bowling Green are teams that Michigan shouldn't overlook, 
that I'm not going to overlook, but on paper, Michigan should crush those programs, and those games should basically be over by the first quarter or halftime. This self-imposed penalty will likely end Jim Harbaugh's dispute with the NCAA. However, only time will tell. One thing about Jim Harbaugh is he is a polarizing character, and he is not afraid to speak his mind. And he's not afraid of making enemies, whether it's Richard Sherman in the NFL, or whether it was the tunnel incident with Michigan State, where he wasn't afraid to speak his mind and to, you know, I would say go go full throttle, for lack of a better term. And I think that as a result of that, the NCAA might not want to give up. They may want to show that they still have power, even though they have little to no power, and Michigan and the NCAA might be dragged out into this long, cold war for longer than a year, or perhaps who knows when it will end at this point, because I was shocked when the NCAA announced that they weren't approving of Jim Harbaugh's proposed four-game suspension, which implies they want him to be suspended for more games, and we'll just have to see where it goes. But overall, this suspension is not going to mean much in the grand scheme of Michigan football. Is there always a chance, as Michigan has lost to Appalachian State before, is there always a chance that Michigan or any team drops an unexplainable game against an inferior opponent? Of course. But if that hap- if that happens in the first three games against a UNLV a Bowling Green, or an East Carolina, Michigan was never going to go 15-0 anyway. And likely they were never going to even win the Big Ten or place top two in their division anyway. Because I don't expect Penn State to lose to West Virginia. It's possible, yes, but I don't expect it to happen. I don't expect them to lose to UMass. I do not expect Ohio State to lose to, you know, let's say Indiana. Their opening road game. It's a Big Ten conference game, but Indiana's a bad football team. I don't expect Wisconsin to lose in their non-conference games. I I really don't. I don't expect Minnesota to lose to Eastern Michigan. So Michigan should have no problem going 3-0. Jim Harbaugh will get to return for the home game against Rutgers, warm himself up before going on the road against Nebraska, and then on the road again against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Michigan football will be just fine. Thank you all for watching this very short episode. Episodes typically aren't as short as this, but there isn't much to talk about, really. I already talked about Jim Harbaugh's proposed four-game suspension around a month, maybe two months ago. I forget when that news exactly broke. And a three-game suspension means one less game to talk about in light of a potential suspension. There's no interim head coach being announced. This is all unfolding rather rapidly so i'll update in the community post section when an interim head coach is named among any other potential details but that's all i have to say in today's short episode and i'll see you guys tomorrow for two video tuesday make sure to subscribe like this video and comment your thoughts down below if you haven't already i'll see you guys later Bye bye